The MIDI mapping window is opened by clicking this map tab under the editing window. It is used for mapping MIDI controllers to track and transport parameters in Soundbridge. You can add a new mapping lane by clicking this plus button here. In the first dialog menu, select the track containing the parameter you wish to map. Or if you wish to map a general Soundbridge parameter, select Soundbridge. The second dialog lets you select which parameter from the track or Soundbridge you wish to map. It will populate with plugin parameters you've read in the rack of the selected track. Now just let me briefly show you how to read any parameter from a plugin and have that available to have automation written for it or to map it in your MIDI mapping editor. So let's see this compressor and when I press this A button it will show me all the available automation. Right now there's none so no parameters have been read. And if I click on the read button while it's active, if I touch any of the parameters it will show up right here and it will be available to write automation for it or have it mapped in your MIDI mapping editor. Now I can disable the read, close the plugin, and you can see that if I create a new mapping lane and select the drums group like this, in that drums group, I will find those two parameters mappable. The learn button will allow you to assign control on that track by moving or pressing it on your controller. The MIDI message field will identify the control that has been assigned. The device field will identify and display the mapped MIDI device name. And the minimum maximum field will allow for setting up a minimum and maximum boundaries for the map parameter. This can be quite useful. Limiting the range of a parameter will let you use the MIDI controller with more precision. Invert button exchanges the maximum and minimum values set for the controller with each other so that the minimum becomes maximum and vice versa. Now, if I wanted to map a button on my keyboard, like the one that controls the transport bar, like exactly these, stop, play, pause, record, I can just go right here. And I already have the stop and record mapped. So I'm going to select Soundbridge. To make it easier, we have the search field that is automatically selected. So I can start typing in playback. And I will get this toggle playback. Now that we have that selected, I want to learn one of those buttons. So I will press the play button and that's learned now. But from what you can see right here is that all of those are just notes that come from this second controller. Now, if I was to use those and have an instrument selected like that, on which the MIDI input is all from all channels, these will actually trigger notes just like that. That stop would trigger an A5 note. Now, what can I do about that? Well, I'm going to open preferences by pressing P on my keyboard, going to MIDI, and on that MIDI device, the MIDI Input 2 from Arturia Keylab, from my keyboard, I will uncheck this check mark that makes that controller included in the device all setting. So if I go to MIDI Input and select from external, all and all channels, in that all, that MIDI Input 2 is also going to be included. So by doing that in preferences, I have excluded that controller from being detected. So now when I use those buttons, play, record, stop, none of those actually trigger any notes. Finally, to delete any of these mapping lanes, just click on one and press delete on your keyboard.